Hi everybody, Coach Keith here, and today we're talking about picking things up, putting them down, basically the core of my existence. All right, we're talking about the deadlift. So we'll get into the last of the big four movements. Right, so let's get into the deadlift. Now, first of all, why do we need the deadlift in our training program? The deadlift is gonna be our hip hinge movement pattern. So it's going to allow us to build our hamstrings, our glutes, our hips. The deadlift is also going to be phenomenal building the traps, the thickness of the upper back, and the spinal erectors, the muscles that run down the center of the back. Because supporting those loads is going to help build and develop those muscles. Fundamentally, picking things up off the ground is also a movement that we definitely need to train because throughout daily life, we're going to be bending down, we're going to be picking things up, and we definitely want to make sure that we have musculature and we have strength so we can do that pain-free and without injury. Now, we'll look at the second point, which is going to be the problems with the deadlift. Now, I'm going to break down the form and at the end of the video, we're going to get into the problems and then we're going to get into how to fix them. So guys, let's get started and break down the deadlift step by step. So first, we're just going to go through the steps. So in order to get to the bar, the first thing that I'm going to do is take my stance. Now to determine stance, the easiest way to think about that is going to be the stance you would use if you were going to do a vertical jump. For me, that's going to be my feet just inside shoulder width. If you're not sure where your stance should be, that's a good place to start. So when I step up to the bar and I take my stance that is just inside shoulder width, my toes are going to be pointed slightly out. What I'm looking for is when I look down, I wanna see the front two laces of my shoe. That's gonna tell me that the bar is centered directly over the middle of my foot. We wanna keep the bar directly over our center of gravity, and that's gonna be the middle of our foot. As we go through the movement, we're gonna try and keep the bar as close to the center of gravity as possible, which is why we're going to bring the bar directly up our shins and then pass our knees. So the next step is going to be to hinge at the hips. So I'm going to hinge at the hips by pushing my butt back. This is going to preload my hamstrings. As I'm doing this, I can already feel the stretch in my hamstrings and you can see my toes are starting to want to come up because the weight is now on my heels. Now the next movement, as you can see, I'm not all the way down to the bar yet. So to get the rest of the way down to the bar, once I've hinged and stretched my hamstrings as much as possible, is going to be to bend at the knees. So I'm going to bend the knees and bring my shins forward. As you can see, my shins are now touching the bar. Then I can come down, grab the bar. I want my arms just outside of my knees. This is going to give us the longest distance on our arms. And that's going to allow us to take the most strain off of our back in this position. So I grab the bar, thumbs over. I'm going to squeeze the bar as hard as possible. Next, I'm going to set my lats. So I'm going to pull my shoulders down and back as if I'm trying to tuck them into my back pockets. Another way to think about it is to think about trying to protect your armpits. If someone was trying to tickle you on the armpits, and you would go like this to try and protect them. That's another way to think about engaging your lats. So once I've hinged and I'm down, I've tucked my shoulders into my back pockets. Then now I've set my lats. Now, when I set my lats, you can hear, well, I don't know if you can hear, but there's a, there's a clink. So what that sound is, is it's the slack being pulled out of the bar. So as I put tension into my lats, this bar comes up and it hits the top of the, uh, the bar sleeve, which is this, comes up and touches the inside of the plate here. So I'm already creating tension on this bar before it ever leaves the ground. So I'm hinged, I come forward, I grab the bar, I set my shoulders and you hear that clink. So I'm almost, if you can see, I actually can do it because the weight is so light. I can, without ever moving my legs, I can set my lats hard enough that I can actually pull this bar off the ground. So I'm gonna set my lats and I'm gonna apply tension into this bar. 
Once I'm here, now I'm ready to lift. So I drive through the middle of my foot. Once it passes my knees, I bring my glutes forward into the bar. The bar descends in the exact same way. So as we pick the bar up, so I'll do it again, set my lats, pull up along my shins. Once it passes the knees, I shove my glutes forward into the bar. We descend the same way. Guys, a couple of quick points on the deadlifts before we look at the form from the side. First of all, we need to make sure that our core is braced during this movement. Now, I like to brace at the top. Some people like to brace at the bottom. It doesn't really matter where you want to brace your core, but we need to make sure that our core is stable. So whether you brace at the top when you're standing up or in the bottom of the movement, you need to make sure that before you pull the bar that you have your abs braced. Now, if you don't know how to do this, check out my video on bracing your core for beginners. That'll give you some tips on how to do this. I didn't note it in the deadlift setup, but just know that every time you deadlift or lift any weight where it's going to apply force to your spine, we want to make sure that we have a strong core and that we're bracing hard. The other thing that I want to demonstrate is the difference between the deadlift off the floor and a Romanian deadlift. Now, the important part of the deadlift for the purposes of our training developmentally is the hip hinge. The hip hinge backward as our hips move backwards, stretching our hamstrings and our glutes, is going to give us that developmental tool to build those muscles. So a Romanian deadlift is basically just the top portion of a deadlift. It's the hip hinge only. Whereas a deadlift off the floor is going to require your knees to travel forward. The Romanian deadlift does not. So I'm going to use a piece of PVC pipe just to quickly demonstrate the difference. So, if I'm set up in my deadlift stance and I take a piece of PVC pipe and put it directly along my spine like this, what we can see is that the hinging is coming only from the hips. So I'm not, if I round my back, you can see this is what a rounding, rounding of the back looks like. If I were to move my knees forward to go down, you'll see my knees come forward. All we want to do is we want to hinge at the hip. So I'm trying to reach my butt backwards so my knees are not bending and my back is not bending. So as you can see, my back is staying perfectly straight through the hinge. Now, if I was doing a Romanian deadlift, this would be maximum stretch for me. My hamstrings are fully stretched. I can't push my butt back any forward. The only way for me to get down to this bar would be for me to either round my spine, which we don't want to do, or in the case of a normal deadlift, if I'm hinged all the way, then I'm going to bend my knees in order to get down to the bar. So that's a quick demonstration, guys, to show the difference between a deadlift off the floor, which is going to require you to bend your knees, versus a hip hinge only movement like a Romanian deadlift. I'm going to go over a couple of the issues that people have with the deadlift. Now, the first one that I hear about is the risk of injury for deadlifting. Now, the reason that this happens is because people are constantly deadlifting off the floor and they're not generally aware if they have a mobility issue. So, as I demonstrated with the PVC pipe, if you cannot maintain a neutral back without rounding your spine over to get down to that bar, then you definitely don't want to be deadlifting off the floor. Now, there's several fixes that we can employ for this. Now, if you're just using the deadlift as a developmental exercise, then the Romanian deadlift is going to be a great option because it's just the top portion of the deadlift. So you can start with the bar in a rack you can pick the bar up off the rack and just do the hinge movement without ever having to go all the way down to the floor. That's still going to give you the development, but without having to risk your lower back. Now, other options are going to be using something like the pins in a power rack. You can adjust them to whatever height will give you the ability to get into that correct position. Another option is going to be something like this. 
This is just a homemade block. It's some two by fours that I cut in half and screwed together. That's gonna equate to a three inch elevation. So if you just make a couple of those and you put the plates up on that, it'll make the bar 12 inches off the ground instead of just nine. Another option that some gyms have is a hex or trap bar that has handles that are elevated three or more inches, depending on the type of bar. And that will, again, allow you to get down to the bar without needing those few extra inches of mobility that may cause you to round your lower back. Now, the only instance where people absolutely have to do deadlifting off the floor is if it's for competition. So if you're a power lifter or a strongman or involved in some type of lifting competition where you need to pull deadlifts off the floor, then yes, you're going to have to deadlift off the floor. But for everybody else, if your mobility doesn't allow it, then don't worry about it. We can absolutely use those other techniques I described and still get all the benefits of deadlift. Now, the final thing I wanna to touch on on deadlifts is the fatigue level. Now, deadlifting off the floor causes a massive amount of systemic fatigue. So, for example, doing three sets of 10 as hard as you can on deadlift is going to cause a massive amount of fatigue as compared to doing, let's say, three sets of bicep curls as hard as you can. So you need to be aware that the deadlift is massively fatiguing. The reason that I like the Romanian deadlift so much is because it seems to be less fatiguing for the vast majority of athletes when they don't have to go all the way down to the ground. Now, Science is not exactly sure why the deadlift in particular is so fatiguing, but it's believed that it has something to do with the axial load on the spine. And by not having to bend the knees and go all the way down, we reduce some of that axial load on the spine throughout the deadlift. So if the deadlift is absolutely fatiguing you going all the way down to the floor, even if you do have the mobility to do it, then potentially trying one of these options where you don't need to go down as low may be beneficial to your level of fatigue. So just keep that in mind, guys, when you are doing the deadlift. All right, guys, that's it for the deadlift. Go ahead and implement this form and these tips in your next workout. Guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Leave your questions in the comments section below. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and a share. Check out AmericanIronTraining.com for workout programs and apparel. I appreciate everybody's support. Thanks for watching.